Hi, good people. <laughs> oh my god, this is so satisfying. It is, actually. It will relieve all the stress in the world, tapping away at the quality mechanical switch. And now, my friends, a magic trick. <laughs> nice. All right, good people. So before we get into really cool keyboard content at Computex, I would like to thank Fantex and SteelSeries for making our visit possible. So our desire to explore really cool keyboard content at Computex really started with SteelSeries and their introduction of a new switch called OmniPoint. They're using the whole effect technology in which you can customize the actuation point from 0.4 millimeters to 3.6. And that is a cool concept, but it is not a new concept because the Hall Effect switch has been out, I think, for like 30 years or so. So let's start with wooden keyboards. The wooden one was my first analog keyboard, and you could customize the actuation point as well, just like with OmniPoint switches. And now wooden is releasing a new Lecker switch. So it is using the same Hall Effect technology as SteelSeries does. So there's a magnet at the bottom, there's a magnet in the actual switch, and they're measuring the signal between the two magnets to calculate or calibrate the actuation point. So the Lecker switches will be linear. Of course, that is needed when you have the customization of the actuation point. But one cool thing is they're introducing this dynamic reset point. And that is if you bypass the actuation point uh, and you still do not reset the key, anytime you go slightly up, the key will reset. So you could theoretically activate the key and then perform these minor up and down movements and the key will again activate, granting you much faster actuation so you don't have to bottom out and reset the key every time all the way to the top uh, because the dynamic reset point will already be active beyond that first actu actuation point. I don't know if that makes sense. They will be introducing a special edition keyboard from Wooding. So this is the Wooding 2, so a full-size keyboard with a really cool uh, graphical and vibrant layout. And uh, obviously using PBT keycaps, quality, lacquer switches, nice body. And they're trying to shift away from the gaming demographic and move into a more enthusiast and serious crowd for keyboards. I'm really excited to have more Hall Effect switches on the market now. And by far the most visually impressive keyboard we saw at the show was the Ducky 1-2 SF. SF stands for 65%. This is the year of the pig edition from Ducky, which has an incredibly unique font. It has this dark, rich red keycaps, a really cool body, additional uh, special keycaps, uh, both for the escape and for your uh, right keycaps, both of which have meaning and they describe to you exactly what it means um, in, in the culture. We have a little bit of golden accents behind a type C connection. And the overall keyboard is just, it's so unique that you most likely will not be able to buy it because it's not that expensive either. Only like it's under $200. And for that type of special edition, PBT keycaps, like a really fantastic build quality. The space bar also has has this really unique pig graphic and they are using PBT keycaps with die supplementation technique. And what's really cool is the new 1-2 SF keyboard is also available in your standard edition white or black, ranges from $89 to $119. And it really removes that stigma surrounding uh, Ducky being like a really expensive brand because of their quality. It's not like that. They deliver really good quality keyboards, but uh, are actually not that expensive. Moving on to Cooler Master, we finally have a properly low profile keyboard, the SK851. It will use Omron's new B3KL switches, which are incredibly low profile. It will come in both linear and tactile formats. And just from our typing experience alone, the switches felt much better than the linear low profile reds that they have currently on their SK850 line of keyboards. And I'm really, really excited for this type of uh, the SK851 keyboard to come out because it will be fully wireless. Right now it's only full size, but it'll be both PC and Mac compatible, and hopefully the battery life will last forever, and the switches themselves feel really awesome and so do the keycaps. And then we found Vermillo, and this is something that I'm really excited to share because they're this boutique slash enthusiast slash almost budget-friendly keyboard manufacturer and where you customize absolutely everything from your switch type to your keycap color, to your font, to your space bar design, to the actual body of the keyboard, TKL versus full size, everything about the whole customization process is up to you. They use PBT keycaps, which are super high quality and die sublimation techniques in which the actual font or whatever is written on the actual keycap is imprinted throughout the entire body. So if you were to 
have a cross section of the keycap, you will actually see that die of the font or whatever else. So it will never wear off. Uh, it's not laser printed. It's not a sticker. It's literally imprinted inside the keycap. And the most impressive part with Vermilio keyboards is the price. So Eber customized himself a TKI layout with different switch types throughout the board. So the wall area was something else. He got himself additional keycaps, a wrist rest, and that price was $150. And that is usually the price point of a, your regular traditional gaming keyboard that is very mainstream. Yet here you have something that is literally tailored by you in your color customization. And I'm really just wanted to pass that information to you because I feel like uh, they deserve some attention. And then the wooden guys tipped us over into the direction of Leopold, a supposedly a company that makes really high quality keyboards, but their pricing tops at $125. But from what we saw in terms of the customization of the different layouts and different color options, different wrist rest, it was all really, really high quality. For example, the PCB underneath, all the soldering points were really well done. And this is coming from wooden guys that make keyboards themselves. They said it's a fantastic job on the actual soldering points. So for all silent enthusiasts, this is something really cool. They had this silent focused keyboard that had felt underneath the PCB and the frame. The frame was aluminum, and this is to minimize any vibration noise. They had felt underneath the keycap itself, and a little rubber piece uh, on the body. So when the keycap bottoms out, that sound is being absorbed. They had additional stabilizers on the space bar and simply typing on the keyboard. Um, not only did the felt and additional materials kind of dampen the sound, but it also gave the, the keyboard a little bit of a different feel. And that is so unique. And that keyboard was $109. And then we got to try their new switch that aims to compete with Topra. And that is one of the most unique switches that I've ever typed on. And that after the actuation point, the switch becomes heavy. And that disincentivizes you from bottoming out. It was so enjoyable to type on. And so that, my friends, concludes our little keyboard exploration and Computex. This is something that I never expected to see here. And the fact that we were able to just see these five companies in a span of like 30 minutes just is incredible and i'm really looking forward to doing more exploration at next computex because i'm sure we'll find some gems in the future but if you guys have any experience with ducky or vermilo or leopold let us know in the comments because i would definitely want to branch out into that target that premium niche keyboard market that isn't so expensive as it turns out i'm dimitri thanks so much for watching and uh check out this other relevant content as usual I'll see you guys in the next video. Boom! Boom.